This is the latest version of Razer's essential RGB gaming keyboard, the Sonosa V2. At $60, it's actually not the most budget-friendly option out there, so we're gonna take a close-up look and see if it packs in enough features to justify that price. Inside the box, we get the Sinosa V2 wrapped up in a protective plastic film, a very small quick start guide, and a little bit of the usual Razer swag. This is a full-size board and it measures about 460 millimeters long, 65 millimeters wide, and about 25 millimeters thick. Compare it to 10 keyless and 60% boards and it's a significantly larger design and it's gonna take up a fair bit of desk space as well. The build here is totally plastic from top to bottom all the way around. You're not gonna find any metal on here, no metal face plates or any fancy features or treatments or materials or anything like that. Very basic plastic on the entire board. Now that also means that it's not the most rigid board out there. If you press down on the middle, there's definitely some flexibility there, but it's not something that you're going to notice while gaming, and in my experience, it didn't affect its performance at all, so no worries there. Underneath, there's some anti-slip pads and two different levels of tilt angle adjustment, which is actually not something I expected to see on an essential or entry-level board, so great job to Razer for including that. The USB cable is very plain and basic, and it's not detachable at all, but there are a few different routing options on the bottom that'll allow you to get the cable into a position that works with your setup. Now, there are a few nice features that Razer decided to throw in here, even though it's a more entry-level or essential gaming keyboard. We've got full end key rollover. All the keys are fully programmable as well. There's a 1000 Hz polling rate and spill resistance. Now this is not a mechanical keyboard. It uses the older, cheaper style dome or membrane system in place of mechanical key switches, and key presses feel distinctly different from a mechanical keyboard. These keys are kind of mushy and cushioned feeling, if that makes any sense, and the typing experience isn't gonna stand out in any special way, but overall, I would still say that it's pretty good. In terms of sound, it does seem to be quieter than a lot of the mechanical boards that I've tested and used over the years, but at the same time, it's definitely not silent. The keycaps are just made of plain old ABS and it's noticeable. They feel very thin and lightweight and they've got this glossy smooth finish to them that tends to really show dirt and fingerprints. At the top right there's four dedicated multimedia keys and a volume rocker. The four main keys feel solid and responsive but the rocker is really loose and it rattles a bit when you use it unfortunately. But this is still a nice feature and I always prefer keyboards with multimedia keys over those that don't have anything at all. And there's also a few quick access features on the function layer, including macro recording, game mode, and backlight brightness. And all the indicator lights are just above the arrow keypad. Razer did an awesome job with the backlighting here, which is really no surprise these days. Keys are individually backlit and powered by Razer Chroma that you can configure using their Synapse software. There's the usual list of presets from Razer, and also the option to customize your own effects if you want to. A fair bit of light shines through around the keys, and they also integrated the multimedia keys into the lighting system, which is awesome. It's really nice to see that. And this may not be the highest end board that Razer makes, but the lighting system's right up there, and it just looks awesome. As someone that uses mechanical keyboards pretty much exclusively, I will say there's definitely a noticeable difference moving to a membrane keyboard like this one. But the shocking thing is, I actually didn't mind it. I played some Cyberpunk 2077 and some fast-paced UT 2004, and I basically forgot that I was testing a membrane keyboard at all. I got used to it quickly, and it didn't affect my gaming performance. Now, I know some people hearing that right now are gonna be like, what the hell are you talking about? Everybody knows mechanical keyboards are the only way to go. And you know what? I'm not disagreeing with you. I think mechanical keyboards are amazing, but what I am saying is that this membrane keyboard and my experience with the Sonosa V2 is that I think it's good enough for pretty much anything you want to throw at it. Unless you're the highest level esports player competing at one of those crazy ridiculously high levels where literally every millisecond counts and can make a difference, then this type of keyboard is probably going to be good enough. Okay, so overall, what's the deal with the Razer Sinosa V2? At $60, it gives us a full layout design with dedicated multimedia keys and some really nice looking RGB backlighting. But at the same time, it's an entirely plastic build and it just uses those membrane keys instead of mechanical key switches. And honestly, I think I'm a little torn on this one just because of that price for what it offers. If it was $45 or $50, I'd probably say it's a no-brainer. 
but at $60, I think, you know, I don't think it's unfair. I want to be clear. I don't think they're being completely unreasonable and out to lunch with the pricing. I just think personally to me, it's a little high for the features that it offers. But you know what? It worked well for me. So I would not hesitate to buy this when it's on sale. That's for sure. But at 60 US dollars at its full price, the only way I would really recommend it is if you're somebody that just absolutely needs to have that Razer Chroma RGB backlighting. If you care about the look of that backlighting more than having a metal faceplate or some mechanical key switches, then you can pick this thing up at its full price and you're probably not gonna be disappointed because overall, it is a good performing keyboard. So I'm gonna have the purchasing links down in the description of this video. Make sure you check those out if you're interested in buying one of these boards and leave us a comment down below and tell us what you think of the Razer Sinosa V2. And make sure you get subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss any upcoming content. And we'll see you.